Okay, good morning, everybody. I think that we can start. So the plan for today is not doing this, is to continue speaking about the state. Hmm? Uh, because we have uh, a few things still to, to say about the state, and then towards the end of the three hours, saying a bit about the context. That is, that is another way in React to pass information through various components. But let's focus on the state first of all. Uh, any question from before Easter? Or doubts from the lab about the state or in general? Everything's super clear. Good. So, uh, do you see this also bigger? No? It's fine. Okay, so this is the same program we developed before Easter. I didn't change, well, actually, I changed one thing. I added this class name here in the form just to have a little bit more space between the, um, the text inputs. But apart from that, I didn't change anything. I just, this is on GitHub already, I just split them up in different files. Mm? So before we had everything in, in within exam components, now we have exam tables that contains all the components related to the table and exam form that contains just the form, no, no other change. Uh, I split this because we are going to add more code and having different file help us to keep track of everything. So let me install this and open it just to see where we left. Okay, so we left here, mm, do you remember? We have a title with the number of exams listed in the table. Then we have the table with our three imaginary exams and we can delete an exam and the number in the title update as well. And if I refresh it, it comes back. And then we added an add button that will show the form. And we stop here. We actually starting to implement the form so that we can write things in it and we made the form a controlled component. Uh, but then if we press add or save in this case, uh, the form closes but nothing happens because we didn't attach any behavior to that form yet. Hmm? So what we want to do today for, for getting started is to make this form working. So to have the save button actually adding an exam in the table. Better in the state that the table has so that the table can re-render itself with uh, the new content. So how we can do this? So we, we can go in the uh, form, hmm? and we need to add, we said, an on submit. We need to add the methods that tell React, that tell our application what to do when we submit the form. Hmm? What means when we submit the form? When we press the button, that has type submit within the form itself. So when we press this button, we want to call a method, then we can call it, we can create it. Uh, const and all submit. It is a function.
And here we want to describe what we want to do after submitting the form. Hmm? And what we want to do after submitting the form? And this is a question. To update the state, to add an exam to the state of to our list of exams that is in the state. That is in the state of mm -hmm. app. Mm -hmm. If you remember, the state of the exams is in app. So the highest level component that we have. Mm -hmm. Good. So how we call this endo submit? This endo submit is called via the um, event on submit that for forms needs to be declared on the form uh, element. Mm? And here we can say endo submit. And let me stop this for a moment. Okay? So here the endo submit, given that this is an event handler, can receive a parameter that is the event, the submission event. And the first things we want to do while handling a form in React is to, if you remember, you don't remember, yeah? Make it controlled. No, the, the, the component is already controlled. Prevent the default. Prevent the default. Mm -hmm. Because what, what do we see here that happened? So now it stops, so it doesn't work. That when it press saved, the form closed. Mm -hmm. Let me see if it's work again in this unstable state. When I press save before, you see the form closes. But actually, there is nothing in the button that say that the form should close. We didn't change anything. So the, the state that handles the, the closing of the, of the form is in exam table that we didn't touch it, and it's just the show form. And if you look in this file, there is no place in which we say show form true when we press the button. So why the form, this form closes? This form closes because this is the behavior of the form, the standard behavior of the form. That is not closing the form, but is reloading the page. And when the page reloads, it reloads with the original behavior, that is the add bot button. So to make it more visible, if you delete an exam and I press here save, you see that the behavior is the one of reloading the page because the exam appear. And you notice this also from the URL. Maybe you don't see it, but there is a question mark in the URL. That's because the form tries to submit itself and the default behavior is making the submission to a new page and given it in this case there is no new page uh, indicated, it's just a submission to the same page where the form is. So this one. Hmm? And this will reload the page. A again, this is something that we don't want. We don't want to reload the page. We don't want to start from scratch every time we submit a form. We want to continue. We want to preserve the state of the application. Hmm? So if we delete this and we add a new exam, we don't want the table to be restored with the original list. We want these two plus the new exam. So we need to prevent this. And how do we prevent this? We say event dot prevent default. These apply to many events. Hmm? So <coughs> uh, Visual Studio Code doesn't allow you to autocomplete that. Hmm? 
because it's applied to many events, but here you know that is a form, and so the parent default of that form or the form is a specific thing hmm, that is not updating the page. So if I um, refresh this, hmm, we can try, so let me also remove the question mark from the URL. If you press add, and now we press save, hmm, I pressing save, you see nothing happen now. I prevented just the default behavior. We clearly need to do something more than just preventing the behavior. Hmm? But at least the page doesn't reload. And what we need to do now? Update the states, yes but the state we said that is not here, hmm? and we said that the state is in app, and we actually, we created already the add exam method, we passed this function to our props in exam table, so let's check that this props is drilled down until the form, uh, so exam tables um, add exams, it passed to exam form. So here in exam form, we can say props dot add exams. But these props needs an exam because it attached the exam to the existing list of exams and return the new list. So before, so here we need to write exam, right? We need to add an exam, but what is this exam? An object, that's true. With, With what inside? With the different state of the controlled component, yes. And so we have all the information we need when we press submit, we should have all the information we need in the field of the form. The field of the form are mapped to the state, to the local state of the form, so we just need to read those states to create our exam object. Mm? So we can write const exam equal, and then we can create an object. In this case, it was just an object, if you remember. In app, it was just an array of objects, nothing fancy with code, name, score, and date as a DJS object. So here we need to do the same. Uh, name, uh, code. Uh, code that is code. Name that is course. Score, it's score the object key is score the variable, the state, and date, uh, the exam date is the JS of date. So we prevented the fault. We created the object that we need for adding to the table in the exact format that the table expect this object, and then we call the add exam method that will go back to app.js and actually add that in the state. And as a result, since we change the state of the entire components, the entire components will render. <coughs> and we should have the new uh, state in place. Can we try or you're still writing? Is everything clear up to now? Yes, no? Yes. Uh, actually here where we, some of you 
continue to write. Actually, here we should do a bit of validation. So checking that the code is in the right format. So starts with numbers and has, has three to five letters. And that the, uh, the course name is not empty or not an empty string. It's actually a course. And that the score, maybe it's more than 18 and less than 31 or 30. And that the date is something that we can actually parse into a, a date. And for some of these things, is actually already done, already prevented, because date is just a date object. So you cannot insert anything he else here that is not day, month, and here. You cannot write a word. But let's try if the form now works. So course name, I don't know. Uh, the course name is test, the score is 30, and the date is today. Hmm? So we can try. You see, we added the course to the table with the information we inserted and here we can do the same things we did for the others. We can delete this exam because at this moment, this is an exam like all the others. And if we refresh the page, we uh, regenerate the, the, the table with the three original exams because this is just a temporary modification that we did while the application was working. So now, If I do something like this, an empty form, and press save, what happens? Empty row is added. An empty row is added. Or mm -hmm. the row with whatever content we, we put in, in it. In this case, an empty row. And we don't want to, to do this. We want to prevent this. So we can prevent this in two ways. One is adding here some validations. So we can manually check, is code empty? Is um, course name empty, etc. And we can do manually all this validation. And we can if code different from an empty string, and if course name is different from an empty string, et cetera, et cetera, and we can give an error, or, and or, we can leverage on the HTML validation control that we have for text. So for instance, here in the course code, we can say that this is required. This is a mandatory field, it cannot be empty. So in HTML, you will write required without anything else. In React, you can write required equal true to say that it's actually required. And we can do the same for a course name as well. Required true. So at least we say this is not, cannot be empty. And then we can add a few other checks if we want in this case. And the nice thing of this is that, uh, and we are going to see, um, if we submit a form that doesn't uh, respect this constraint here, this validation, is the page that automatically give us a message of error. It's not us to inject back, to inject back an error. It's just the form 
that know how to handle these validations. So which, we, which other um, value can put here? So code. How can we validate code to prevent, let's say, error, to prevent finer validations? The length. And which is the length? It's maximum, minimum, equal to seven. Equal to seven. But we don't have a validation for equal to seven. Uh, we can have minimum and maximum. So we can say that the maximum length is seven because we, at least here, we cannot have course code longer than seven charters. But we can also say that the minimum is five because if you remember, uh, or if you know, all the course code at Polytechnic are five letter plus two that describe the specific uh, degree, hmm? the change among degrees. So we can maybe also admit five letters exams to stay more general. Hmm? And then no more than seven. And we can do this with mean length equal five and max length equal seven. or whatever number you want, but this is minimum and maximum. And we can do, for instance, very similar things for numbers, for the score, which is the valid score here, which is the range of valid score. 1830. So we can, as we did before, set a minimum and a maximum. In this case, not a minimum length, because this is a number. This is type number, not type string. But given it's a number, we have a minimum and max. So we can write here min 18 and max Let's say 31, we admit the loaded. So all of these already check some behavior. Then we can go here and add other validations. Like here in the course name, we say that is requested. So it cannot be empty. But what about, what if we add just a space? in that field. Space is not empty, so it's valid for this kind of validation. So we can do more checks if we want in the code. And as I told you a few, several weeks ago, validation is one of the things that if you want, you, we can spend hours validating all the fields because there will be always something new to validate, some edge case to consider. So it's, it's, it's good to have some kind of validation. Don't um, dedicate too much time to validation. It's good to have validation, but move on. Otherwise you spend hours just on validating and not making everything else uh, working. Better than validation is preventing errors when possible. So not having form that accept values that you need to validate after. wrongly. Yes, thank you. Hmm. So we can try. So now what happens if I press this? I, if I press save, I expect an error in course code and in course name because they were empty. Hmm. And you see that the browser tell us in order from the first one to the other, please, please fill out this field because it was required. 
Okay, so let's write 0, 1. And then press save. Please, ins please lengthen this text to five charter or more. You are currently using two. And this is implicit error messages that the browser is giving to you. We didn't create this. We can personalize this if we want, but we didn't create this. So if we here insert ABC and we press save, the same things happens for course name. This must not be empty. And so here we can add the name. And the same things apply here. If I put 40, value must be less than or equal to 31, etc. Mm? So all these are implicit validation that HTML and the browser is doing for us. So if I press save here, the exam is actually inserted mm? and we can continue. Again, as I was saying, we can add additional validation here in code. Again, okay. if name contains uh, space in the first charter or if name is just a space, then we can throw an error in the end of submit. So before adding things to the exam table. Okay? Any question up to now? Good. Uh, for adding, we just need one other thing. We would like to close the form after adding, right? Because otherwise, we can continue to add the same exam. And if we want to change something, we just go here, delete things, etc. So we just want to close the return here in this state in which we need to press add, we can add something, we can press save, and the form closes. Hmm? How can we do that? And where we're going to do that? We need to update the set show form state. That is an exam table, mm. not an exam form, in the component. So how can we do that? We can pass props. Yeah. We already have set show form. So passing as a prop, there is an alternative without passing the props. Can the exam form surrender itself? Yes, depends how. No. No, it's, it's correct to call this because we actually want to um, to remove, we, in the end of submit, we can empty the state if you want. We can say set, we can manually say for each state of the form after submitting here, we can say, well, set code empty, set course empty, set score 30, set date empty. We can delete the content. That is one thing that we can do, but you see it's lengthy because we need to do this manually for each element in the form. And we already have the set for the show form uh, state, so we can continue to use it, not just for displaying it the first time, but also for closing it after the uh, save. So one way is to pass it down as a props, so that we can use it in end of submit. There is another way, and without using it as 
without passing it as a props. So you're seeing here, no. How we can update the events in the submit? Because the events is triggered by the form that is in another component. And this is the father, not even. This is the, the, the sibling of that form. No, if we don't prevent the default behavior, we re-render the page, we don't insert anything. It's easier. So here, We can say that after add exam, we also want to call set show form false. We don't, not, we don't need to conditionally render because this is the props, the method that the form calls. That is a props pass through, that is a props pass through, et cetera, and eventually is the one in app. But the methods that the form call is this one, add exam here. So it does whatever this add exam here ask, ask him to do. So we can write something like exam, arrow function, props add exams, exam, semicolon, set. Uh, no, yes, set show form false. We don't need in this case to pass set show form to a props because we handle it where the state is. So we can also pass it through a props, clearly, it's not a problem. But just not to pass yet another props to the, to the form, we can also handle it here. So the add exam that is called by the end of submit with the two things. The first one is passing the exam to the upper layer until app.js, and the second thing is closing the form setting the state to false so that all this component, the table component is re-rendered. And so this is evaluated again. And so the button had is displayed instead of the form. Notice again what we did and what we are doing here, independently from the change I just made. We are saying when show form is true, then add in the page the exam form component. When show form is false, don't add the exam form component, but add the button. So every time React evaluates this expression, it adds or destroy a component. It replaces one component with another one. So the result is that when you press add, you delete add from the virtual DOM and you add the form into the virtual DOM. And then when you press save, you remove the form, you remove the form, you destroy the component, and you add it, the button, back. So it's 
removing and adding elements to the page. Not hiding elements, just destroying them. So let's see if this work. If I press add and add an exam, now we have validation. If I press save, the form is closed. And if I press add again, this is empty. Different from before, since it will remain full of the previous information. So why it's empty now? We just changed this variable. We didn't change anything in the form. So why the form is now empty? Because it creates a new form every time. So it resets all the value of the form every time that is created. So this is a way to create, to recreate, to reset a form, recreating it from scratch. And this uh, show form allow us to do that, to create from scratch a form every time. And in this case, this is the intended behavior because we want to add a new exam. We don't want the information from the previous one. So recreating a new exams, a new form, means that these four lines are called. So the state is initialized with initial value every time that the form is created. But remember that this happens only when the form is created. So code equal to an empty string and course the same and score to 30 and date to current date happens when the form is created. Not when the form is edited, just when it's created. When it's not created, it's already existing, these four line, this initialization here is not called anymore. And code, course, score, date, keep the previous value that they have. Okay? Any doubts up to here? Because now we are going to edit the exam and that will be a little bit more complex. So if we have doubts for the add, it's better to tell everything now. No doubts? Good. So let's uh, uh, reflect a bit again on the state. Uh, without actually doing that, doing anything, just considering that. So let's imagine that we want to do a similar thing that you did in the lab. We would like to add a filter. Like, okay, I want to filter all the exam or the exam taken in 2021, 2022, per year. So we can add maybe a button here that say all, another 2021, another 2022. How we are going to do that with respect to the state? Are you going to create a new state, two new states, three new states, no new state? You did it in the lab, so it's the same thing, actually. Instead of having a sidebar, you have a button on the top. What do we do for the state? We just create a different function that modified the, the, the original, modified the original state.
So you, you are telling me that if I press all, let's imagine all, I see I have a state with these three exams. If I press 2021, I delete all the things in the state except this exam. Yeah, but if I, yes, I got it. But if we use, use the set exam and we just keep the 2021 exam, right? We need to delete, we need to pass a new array with just the 2021 exam. And the other two exam, how can I press all after? I reinitialize everything every time. And passing for 2021, 2022, I will need to reinitialize every time. You can take exam dot insert and then you just select the other one. So uh, the state is not depending on the previous state. Hmm. So it's not like I understood. But do you agree? with changing the state of the entire component. That, that works, clearly. So what, what he's saying, if I un understood correctly, is that if I press the all button, I just reload I just do basically set exams with all fake exam. If I press 2021, I do the same and then remove the, the non-2021 exams. If I press 2022, I reload for the, again, fake exams, and then I remove not the, all the others that are not 2022 and put it in the state. It would be nice, let's say in this way. That is a problem of this solution, clearly. Any other? How did you do in the lab? You, you did like this? So there you don't have exams, you have movies, but more or less, it's still an array of objects in a way. You didn't do it in the, in the lab. No, I didn't get it. The same as that, but <laughs> it's more or less the same. But you keep one state, or you have two states for the exam slash movies. Same state, like a, a, a new state. Another state. So you had two states with movies in the in the lab in the lab case. Both of them with movies. Oh, this is hmm. not very good. Now it works clearly, but it's um, so th th that thing that the one that they do well, uh, as a problem. That is, if we want to add or remove something, good luck because you continue to read. And then if we don't need to read that from here, that is an array, but we need to read this information from a server, from a database, you every time ask, please give me all the exam. 
every single time that you want to perform a change that is a little bit expensive in many perspectives. But it works, clearly. Also, this solution works, having two states. But these two states is not really good as a solution because you are duplicating information. Hmm? You are duplicating the same, the same state twice. Uh huh. So you basically do something like this. You now just understand uh, view exam set or whatever. It was um, four days ago. Yes, you you pass it as a props, but then in the uh, movie table, or whatever. So you hear, uh -huh. you hear in the exam table have another state that he has filled from the props, from the original state. So basically, if I understand correctly, here you pass the filter at exam in the ex in the component list of the exams or the movies, you pass already here the filter it, maybe, and then here you have a local state just for those. But you have a local state, in, in, in some way you have a local state here. Why don't having the filter here? and just here. Where you actually render the component. If you have the filter, the name of the filter, the idea of the filter, whatever, it's related to the filter in a state, and you pass it that information here, you can filter directly here. Because here you know that is 2021. And so here you can filter. The, where is it? Here. You can directly filter for the needed exam. You just need the information of which filter is the active one. The filtered array, yeah, the same, yeah. more or less the same that they, they did, yes. And then, yeah. Yes, you, you continue to do all the things. But the, the bad thing, let's say in this way, is having two filters, two states that are the same. Also imagine for adding or deleting something. Here also for deleting. You need to delete them both. And you need to add to both. Because in any moment, you have two states. One that is the original state, and the other one that is the filtered state. And when the filter is all, the two states are the same.
So there is a principle that's called dry, that's, that is don't repeat yourself. So every time you have something that is duplicated, it's probably, there should be another way to do that. Because in that case, we have exactly two states. In a specific moment, you can have the same state twice. One in the original movies slash exams slash whatever, and the other one in the view state. And you don't actually need it because it's just for rendering. It's just for showing in the table. So just hide the other elements. Don't display the other elements. But why modifying the data structure that contains those elements? Yeah, exactly. You just need to, to write here props.exam.filter something, and you need in a state probably the filter so that you can pass it through here. So in this example, we could probably have here in app the filter in a, in a, in a state, all 2021, 2022, etc. We can pass it here, the current filter, the selected filter from the bottom. And then in exam table, we can write here props.exam.filter, a function that allows us to filter just for 2021, 2022, all, no filtering, .map, and everything else will remain the same. You don't need to create a duplicate state. It's always bad to create a duplicate state with the same information then it works, but just, and it's not a big deal for a lab because you are doing the lab for learning, so it's fine. Uh, but keep this in mind, when you try to duplicate things, especially state, we have two states that are the same, it's not a problem of performance as your colleague was saying, JavaScript just use a reference, it's correct. It's not a problem of performance, it's, pro it's a problem of how many errors this can enable you to do after. Because again, for adding things, uh, and this is something that you will need to do in the next lab, for adding things, you need to update two states every time. Maybe not every time, but sometimes you have to add, update two states. And this is error prone. And then you're going to add an edit function and so you're going to edit two things to better the solution. In this perspective, better the solution that they have here in the fourth row uh, of uh, passing the exam uh, as a props, just the recreating every time, a little bit expensive, but at least it's just one. The information is in one place. You have other problem, clearly. But let's say the, the the clean solution in this case is just having a state containing the filter, ID, or names, or whatever, and filtering when you need to filter. That is, when you display the information. Hmm? So states are a little bit tricky for, for this thing to understand in React. So it's fine. We are also having this conversation for this reason. Hmm? Okay? So then if in the bracket you have specific question about the lab, we can also speak about those. Let me do this again. No, because otherwise you fall asleep. Uh. Okay. So now, let's complicate things a bit. Now we want to add an edit button. We want to add a button here in the action column that when pressed will allow us to edit the information for this exam. So we want to press a button here and show a form that will allow us to edit this information. And the form should be pre-filled 
with the information. So when the form open, we should see here the course code. So let's say we want to update information system security. The course code of information system security, information system security as a name, 30 as a score, and the 1st of February 2022 as a date. We want to pre-fill this. And if you press edit for data science, the same. And if you press edit for software engineering, the same. So we want to have a form that is pre-filled with this information. And let me add another constraint to make things a little bit more difficult, just because we want to reuse the same form. We don't want to create another form that is identical. For, for the same reason that I said before for not having two states. If we need to have two components, two separate components, the add form component and the edit form component, we are duplicating code. Because the edit form will be 99% the same of this. Because it has the same field, it needs to submit in the same way, it has the same validation. It's not that editing an exam will change some validation. So it's actually the same piece of information that move around. So a slightly easier way, but just slightly, is to duplicate these components and say, okay, when I press the add, I show the exam form component. When I press edit, I show the edit exam form component. And I copy and paste this code. Again, we don't want to duplicate information. If we need to change the form, anything in the form, like a label or a constraint or a validation, if we duplicate, we need to remember to, it, to update both form. And this is a point of failure, a point of error for us, remembering to update things in multiple places. The so better always have one single source of truth that is in our application, even for components. So we want to reuse this form. And the tricky things is that in some cases, we need to see this. In other cases, we need to see this, but filled with, inf with information. Hmm? So when we press add, we should see this. And when we press the button that will appear here, that is edit, we need to see this, but with information in it. OK? So before doing that, let me show you how to update the state. So we already spoke about adding item in the state and removing item in the state. That's the add form and the delete button. For updating things, it's a little bit longer because we need still to use the set state but we cannot just say here is the old state let's modify something within that state because this is not set state work what we need to do is to return a new state that in the case of update will be the same as the previous state plus a new element, a new replaced element for the updated state. So there are mainly, there is, the, the way to do this is using map. So you pick the old state and you do a map. And when in this case, it's just an array. 
written so with number 11 42 and 32 when the number hmm, the id in this case is the same of the number we want to update we just <coughs> update the item otherwise we return the original item hmm? so what means it means that if we want to update 42 hmm, we if it's 11 in a map we return 11 if it's 42 we update 42 with 43 and return 43 if it's 32 we don't need to update 32 and, and so we return 32 but for the map we iterate on all the array and we return all the elements changed or not to create a new state hmm? because for set list for set state we always need to create a new state after the operation we cannot edit a state in place hmm? and so this is the example with just an array with numbers with objects is more or less the same with the difference that we cannot say okay I would like to just edit the value of an object and keep the ID we just need as in the previous case to return in the map the entire new object of the state so if we need to uh, update the elements with a d5 that instead of bar as a value something else we will the map will return id3 val4 because it's unchanged and then here will not change in place the object we'll create a new object and we'll return the new object with the same id as before five and the new value hmm? so here id item.id the same id value the new value So this is what we need to update the state with an array and an array and object. We need to use map because we need a new state, a totally new state, and for each iteration of map, we need to return the element. Either the change one, the entire element. Either the change one or the new, or the unchanged one. And we already said remove, removing um, and here there are some tips uh, I think that we skipped last time uh, for state lifting mm -hmm. so for presentational components but we already you already experiment this in the lab and we already saw this for form stable list widget we should have local state to represent the displayed properties uh, like the sort order open collapsed active posed not for the data to visualize but the display properties uh, and such state is not interesting outside the component because outside of the list uh, sorted list we don't really care if it's sorted or not if it's open or collapsed it's a property a visualization property of the state of the component and then we have container components or application components that instead have the state of the application or of the group of state like our exams like movies that manage the information and the logic for the entire application or for part of the application but for multiple part and centralized update again single source of truth not for not duplicating the form but for the state in this case we have one state and we want to with data with information and we want to update change read that most of the time we don't want to duplicate that or part of that and these are just tips so for doing the edit we need to update for sure the state so we we need to do something like this in our um, application hmm? 
So let's go back here. Uh, so let me also add a, a cancel button here so that we can close the form. Uh, here we are in the form. So that we can close the form um, even if we, we open the form, we can close the form. Just a button for closing the form, whatever information we have. Hmm? Um, danger. Um, and on click, uh, we should uh, cancel, and we need to pass it as a property. And the um, cancel a cancel button that when clicked will allow us to cancel, to close basically the form, just close the form. So destroy the form and re-add the add button in place. Um, and we can add these cancel props here. In the show form, we can say cancel and uh, what we need to do, we need to just do set show form as false. We just want to close the form, nothing strange. <coughs> so here we added a button that on clicks get the cancel properties and the cancel properties is defined when we pass the component, the property to the component at the, slide, at the upper level that is exam table in this case. Okay, so as always, let's check that is working. And you see now that we have a cancel button here and if we press cancel, we close the form, and if we type something, and we press cancel, and we repress add, the form is empty, because we destroy it and re-add it. So the state in the form is, the local state of the form is reset every time. Okay, so, now let's add the edit button. Hmm? So do you remember where are the buttons? Exam action, here we have the button and let's add the edit button. So button variant uh, primary, that is the blue button. Um, we will add an on click for sure, and we can put it the edit icon. That should be a double. Not this one, okay. Um, that should be, I don't remember. So let's look for a pencil. Pencil. Pencil fill, pencil fill. No, pencil square. Let's use pencil square. Uh, BI, pencil square. Mm. 
we just added a button. Nothing more. So if we close these and update these, okay. We already see the button here. We can add maybe a space between the two buttons since that is a row. Um, how it's called? So that they are a little bit spaced. Now. What we need to do before the break? So logically. What should happen when I press this button? Which are the operations that we expect to happen? In order. Okay, when I press this button, the form shows. Then. The form has the right data in it, so if I press these, the forms show with the information system security code, the information system security name, its score, and its date. Then I can edit something in the form. I press save, and when I press save, it should update the row that is the exam state that we have in app.js. These are the three main steps. Uh, we have, so it's not tricky. So once we have all these here, pressing save and updated states, it's the easiest step. Because we already know how to do that. We need to unupdate exams uh, handler in the app.js. We need to pass it through to the form as we did for the add exam, mm, so that when we press save, if we are in the edit mode, we need to edit the exam. If we are in the add mode, we need to add the exam. So we need to call the right handler. And this is something that we already do a lot of time. The problem is before. before. So this is the table component. This is a button within the uh, exam action. This form is not in the table, in the table, comp in the exam table component. How can this form get the information of a single exam? Not a single exam, a random single exam, the single exam for which we press the button. Because we need to pass this information from here. When we press this, we need to pick this information from the table, in a way, and pass it here to the form. That is another component. And if you remember, the form doesn't have information about the exam. All the exam, a single exam, just no information about exams, the existing exams. The form is just for creating a new exam. So we don't pass, if you look here, we pass to exam form, add exams, and that's it. We don't pass anything related to the table, to the state of the exams, because we don't need it in the form. So to you, how can we pass this information from the table when clicking here, 
from the table to the form. So a common components entering this, uh, in which way? With a state, with a props, uh, with a state. No? No. Do you agree? It could receive the information from app, but in app we have all the exams. We just need the right exam. We need the exam. When the user click here, we need this exam. When the user click here, we need these other exams. So we need a way to understand when the user click, which is the exam that we want. And yes, we have the list of exams in apps, but still we need uh, one more thing that is which is the exam we are editing. Because we are not controlling which is the exam that is editing, is the person in front of a computer that is controlling what is the exam to be edited. The rows as a key, yes, that is the exam code. What we can do, sorry? We can create a function uh, where? The but the key is here. And we need it here. Because here we, are, we, we have the exam. So in the exam row, we have all the information we need. The key, the exam, we already have this information. So if we can take the key, we can also take the exams. That probably, that are the same because actually it's the code of the exam, um, the key. The problem is that the exam row is here and the form is here. That is the same things that he said. Yeah, we don't have, I think that we don't have any other reasonable way right now if not creating a state for passing this information. Well, then this, this state, probably I wouldn't put it in the app.js because we already have, as he was saying, a common answer store. That is this file here, actually, because the exam form is within the exam table component. So it's enough to add it here as a state of exam table. Because actually it's a, a information that the table has, that the table trigger when a person click on the button and it needs to be passed to a form that it's outside the table. So it's, it's actually information that the table needs to handle because it is an interaction from the table not from the entire application. Okay? Can we update? Inside exam row? And then how can we pass the state from exam row to exam, exam form? Uh -huh. No, it's not related, it's, it's here. No? It's after the table, the exam table component does two things, renders the table with the rows, and then renders the form sometimes when show form is true. So exam tables as component as two blocks, one is the table, and the other one is the form. 
And we need the information that is inside the exam row component, that is inside the table, inside the exam table component. So if we have exam row, if we create another form, let's say, not to reuse this, but we create another form inside exam row, clearly that works because it's the same principle here, just putting a state in the common answer store. Okay? And before doing that, we can have 15 minutes of a break. <laughs>